will be going over the genetic algorithm homework. A genetic algorithm is basically an algorithm that solves an optimization problem. And an optimization problem is a problem that has an optimal solution. And an optimal solution is the best solution that you could possibly come up with given a bunch of constraints. And please remember that for this homework, you will implement a generic genetic algorithm, which should be able to basically run to solve any kind of problems, such as um, if you take a look at the tests folder, you would see a, the aimbot and single value and polynomial tests, which are different problems, but just use the same genet generic genetic algorithm that you have implemented. And a genetic algorithm uses principles of nature from biology called natural selections. So we would be using terms such as animals, genes, population, generation, and all kinds of jargon um, similar to that. And we will go over that in a bit. And also, please remember that your genetic algorithm should be immutable, which means that you would ideally be using recursion to solve it, and you will not be able to declare any variables. You will only be able to declare values with VAL and not no VAR whatsoever. So basically, the jargon for the genetic algorithm has a bunch of terms called animal, and genes and population and generations. G N E R T I. Okay, cool. So an animal. Before I define that, I think it would be helpful to define genes first because an animal is something that has a bunch of genes, and that's as simple as that. An animal is defined by its genes, and genes are values that are doubles. And ideally, your genes should be able to account for an output of an animal of type T, which we will go over later. But your genes would be used to make an output between the range of ideally negative 100 to 100, as long as your algorithm can account for a solution that can range between negative 100 to 100, you should be good. And a population is just a bunch of animals that your genetic algorithm thinks like at the current iteration to be um, uh, possible best solutions for the problem. And generations are just a bunch of populations that your genetic algorithm has been producing so far. So you could basically think of this as the number of times your genetic algorithm runs with a given population, with animals of given genes. So they're all basically connected. If it gets confusing, please feel free to revisit this part of the video or take a look at the other resources. And there's also more jargon, which is really important for you to understand. Um, so you would be, since I told you that um, genetic algorithm uses the principles of nature, you would be mutating, doing crossovers, and basically simulating survival of the fittest animal at any given iteration of your genetic algorithm. Okay, this, this was supposed to be fittest. <laughs> okay, cool. There we go. I can spell. So mutate is, it could be a method that you have written and you could write it outside of the scope of your gen, not literally outside of the scope, but like outside of your genetic algorithms function where you can still access it. So mutation, it's up to you how you want to approach it, but ideally if you were to take a look at the document, um, Jesse suggests that you add in random values to a given population uh, and subtract or add random values from the pre-existing animals to perform a mutation. And then Class over is, you can approach it again in any way that you like, but we suggest that you try to average out two animals' as genes and then produce a new animal from those two parent animals and keep doing that for like a number of animals for that given population. So yeah, I just explained it. I don't have to write it. Um, so that's the jargon that you need to really understand to even make sense of this assignment. And the primary objective is 
a method named genetic algorithm, which takes in type parameter t. It doesn't really take in type parameter t. It deals with the type parameter t because, as I told you before, the genetic algorithm has to be very generic and should be able to work in any kind of scope for any types that it has to possibly deal with, such as maybe physics vectors or lines or points. It could be anything, which is why it takes in, um, it deals with the type parameter T, which would also be what your animals would be, con would be converted into. Your animals, your, I suggest that you make an animal class that deals with the mutation crossover and like holds the information such as the number of genes that the cur current animal has has and then you can convert the animal into a type t which per is a perfect segue to the first input that which is an incubator function basically all that an incubator function is it takes in an animal and outputs something of type t if you want to really understand what these are i suggest you look through the code and you look through classes such as aimbot or single value because they have the incubator and cost functions in them and once you understand how they're being used you could use that in your genetic algorithm because ideally those would be called to compute the best possible solution for the problem and the second parameter is a cost function which takes in a type T and outputs a double. So this should kind of like give you a hint that this has, this is closely related to the output of the incubator function. It's up to you to decide how exactly it's related. And I suggest you take a look at the input and output types of these two functions to figure out which function calls on which function. And the third parameter is just the size of genes, which is used to define a particular animal, let's say if you were to define a single value line, right, so you would just need like one gene, but if you want a physics vector, you want x and y values, which shows that you need multiple genes to define that particular animal, which could potentially be of type T, which would be a physics vector. That was a lot to take in. I really suggest that you play the video again, look at the document, try look at the resources, because it might seem overwhelming at first, but it's pretty simple because you're given all the functions such as the incubator and the cost function. All that you have to do is use them. We highly recommend that you follow the recommended algorithm approach because it's basically almost pseudocode that you could um, implement it with code. So um, the recommended algorithm approach asks you to create a bunch of random animals first to um, get your algorithm started because remember that you're going to be using recursion so just to get things started to get things going for the number of generations however many you want them to be just make a list of random animals within the range of the genes and then now this part would be um, the part that would go into the recursive step because it gets repeated for every single generation. Get the best animal from the list of those random animals or like the previous generation. I'm just going to refer to the previous generation from now on because it's only random in the beginning. It's only completely random in the beginning, but later you're going to follow the process of natural selection and then come up with like a new generation that has went through mutation, crossover and whatnot. So just gonna call it generations and find the best animal from that given generation for that iteration of your genetic algorithm and then run the cost function um, on all of the animals in that generation's population and assign that fitness or cost to that particular animal, which is where the class, the animal class, it might come into use if you plan to implement an animal class. But yeah, the third step would be to run the cost function on every single animal and figure out um, its fitness. And then you would go to the next generation, get the best animal, and then perform mutation of that best animal. Well, this you can approach in any way that you'd like, but um, we recommend that you generate random values and then add or subtract that with the best animal and then put it into the next population that's going to move on. And then perform crossover, where this, again, you can 
tackle it however you want, but we suggest maybe take the average of the first two animals, make them the parent, and take the average of that, which, which should give you a new value for the child. And keep doing that for the population that you have. It could be a list, it's up to you. Um, and for the sixth part, you could just add more random animals just to increase the randomness. And once that you have that n number of animals in that population, you would repeat the same step again from here. Because the only the first time ever you get completely random animals, but then after that, it's just recursion. It's following the same steps over and over again for populations over across generations. And generations are basically the number of times your algorithm. We have a bunch of methods for you to test your genetic algorithm on. Um, one of them is the test aimbot, which also comes with a GUI that you can run to visually look at your genetic algorithm in action. And there's also test polynomial and single value. And you're expected to write these tests. And you're not expected to upload these on AutoGrader for grading, but this is solely for you to be able to test your genetic algorithm in any kind of context, just to make sure that your genetic algorithm is indeed very generic and can run with any kind of problem. And you also get the chance to take a look at the GUI to see your genetic algorithm working live to do some really cool stuff, such as work as a dodgeball tower that fires projectiles at a player. And if the player gets hit with the projectile, they basically die. So a genetic algorithm, if it weren't for that, the projectiles would probably just be firing it in the same direction regardless of where the player is. But because a genetic algorithm is being used, the dodgeball tower or the aimbot knows in which direction to fire its projectile so that it could potentially hit the player. Like if I were not moving, they would hit directly at me. And that is because of genetic algorithm. So I hope you can do your best at this assignment. It's a pretty cool one. You'd be left feeling super fulfilled if you do end up getting all of it right, because this is like a great starting point for anyone that's interested into machine learning, and artificial intelligence, all the cool stuff. So. Hope you have fun and learn a lot and good luck.